G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Welcome to La Royale. Today, we're going to have a look at the Nets, which is essentially an Israeli F-16. However, this F-16 doesn't get the AIM-7s or any of those sorts of luxuries. However, it does come with a little ace up its sleeves, and those aces are Python 3s, and it can carry up to six of them. These Python 3s can be particularly potent, and this plane has a really high potential in a supporting role. We'll talk about a little bit more of that later, but first, a word from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by none other than your boy, Raid Shadow Legends, the infamous free-to-play game available on PC and mobile. Raid Shadow Legends is a huge hit among mobile games, but it's also available on PC as well, so you can take it with you when you're touching grass. Raid's gameplay allows you to play at your own pace, play casually and enjoy the high quality graphics, or dive deep into it and compete with others in the PvP arena. Raid also has 700 unique champions to use and a lot of different strategies which will help you to complete the endless list of challenges the game has to offer. Bosses, dungeons, doom tower and more. Raid is one of the few games that has managed to impress me on mobile. It's something I actually play. Here's my profile. I personally enjoy leveling up champions and forming teams that synergize well to defeat bosses such as the Demon Lord. The game also has great lore which you can explore through Raid Call of the Arbiter. It is an awesome new limited lit series which tells you more about the characters and their backgrounds. Raid is adding some of these new characters from the series as champions that you can actually play in game, allowing you to go deeper into the lore of Raid. The first one is Artak, a mighty orc warlord. Artak is currently free for all players for a limited time reward for playing between now and July 24th, and if you've seen episode 1, Call of the Arbiter, you'll definitely want this guy, and if you haven't seen it yet, go and check it out, and then remember to log in for 7 days to get Artak. So what are you waiting for? Download Raid for free for PC and mobile by using the QR code on screen or the link in the description below and finish the tutorial, and then new players get a generous starter pack for free. This goes a long way to supporting the channel. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for supporting this channel and this video. Essentially what we're looking at here is an absolute ace support fighter. The F-16 has one of the most powerful engines in the game and comes with a really, really strong power to weight ratio, which gives it an opportunity to zoom around the battlefield and of course, extremely importantly, maintain plenty of energy in dogfighting. This allows it to increase its speed, or sorry, maintain its speed in these engagements, uh, and it allows them to stay in the fight for longer. Speaking of staying in the fight for longer, the range of this plane is pretty damn good as well. Even with full afterburner, it doesn't quite chug fuel just as much as the other jets around it, such as the Vigan, the MiG-29, and of course the infamous F-14. I find that I get better ranges with the F-16, and then in a pinch I can always glide a little bit better. This plane has very good energy handling. It, I, I'm still working out really how to play this plane properly, um, but the dogfighting in this plane is really weird. Personally, I would steer, steer away from dogfighting. Um, that might just be skill issue, that might just be the way the plane plays, that might just be the matchmaking, but at the end of the day, I don't really see that sort of low speed dogfighting as providing much of a benefit to the Nets and to the F-16 family in general. The way I see the F-16s is more of a sort of zoomy boy, where you're just going to be utilizing that speed and then only pulling out the dogfighting capabilities when you really have to. You can see that even in these turns, even with a full afterburner, I am bleeding a fair bit of speed, but this is nothing compared to some of the other fighters in this area. This does allow me, however, to get away, and, and this is exactly what I'm going to do here. There's an F4S, and the F4S is quite a slow boy, but the AIM-9G and the AIM-9H, of course, that the F4S carries is also a slow boy. It doesn't quite have the range that it used to after that um, missile nerf. You can probably see the little puff of smoke there that represents that little what's left of that AIM-9H. Now, I am going to go in here for what was originally the MiG-23, switching target to the F4S, uh, and the beauty of the pythons is they just they're, they're just better magics to me to in my opinion the way the way i see them is they're like magic twos if they were not uh sort of really short on range and of course they have that really strong capability of uh focusing on a target from the rear aspect 
not necessarily the front aspect. This is always going to be a really sensitive point. So if you're expecting for a target to just hold like a radar missile, you're not really going to, you're sort of missing the point rather of what the Python 3 is. What you're meant to be doing with this plane is you're meant to be getting around your opponents, sneaking around the back of the, of the lemming train, and then firing off the pythons as you go, getting multiple kills in a row. And you're meant to sort of be looking at these really distracted enemies, uh, sort of that medium sort of off bore sight if you're at their, um, in their peripheral vision. This is also a really good spot, mostly because you're using sneaking tactics. Uh, you're not going to be in their, in their front vision. You're not going to be what they're focusing on while they're launching a radar missile. And so you're able to get in there just off that uh, center, center line so that you can really make use of the pythons. And, and it does work. It does work a lot. It works with R24s and, and R27s. So uh, if it works with them, it'll probably work with the Python 3. And, you know, you might just see some gameplay in the background. Depends on what footage I pick. So... We are going to be diving here on two enemies, and you can just see the ability for this this uh, F-16 to really make it what it's worth. It's, it's just doing its job really, really well in this particular situation. You come in from above and from behind, you sneak up on your opponents, and because you've got so much speed and so much engine power, you can just jet away most of the time. And this F-16 is going to basically learn the hard way there's no way that the AIM-9Ls will be able to reach, and you'll be lucky for an AIM-7 to do the same. If I start to notch, if I start to fly at a right angle to his direction of travel, it's going to end up with a really poor lock for the AIM-7. Anyway, I'm going to sort of throw away my advantage here, go into a little bit of a dogfight, try my luck, but unfortunately you can still see that the sensitivity all aspect is very, very low, or very, very high to, uh, to flares, very high susceptibility. And so you don't have, you like, this is something you shouldn't be relying on in the fr front aspect. Now, F-16 versus F-16, I've pretty much got it in the bag because I've let off the throttle a little bit early. And this should be pretty much all I need to secure a winning blow. Uh, in an F-16 versus F-16 fight, you're looking at a symmetrical dogfight. And in a symmetrical dogfight, you obviously don't want to give away your energy too quickly. But of course, you don't want to hold on to it and then put yourself in front of the enemy's guns. Now, Mirage 2000, and I just want you, want you to watch the flares. He's going to flare, but it's still going to track. And, and this is the beauty of the Python 3. It's just got that ability to hold onto its target in rear aspect. And, and that's the most important part, because this is the way that you should be playing the plane. You shouldn't even be playing in the head-on, because this plane isn't really suited for the head-on. You've got no AIM-7s, and without the AIM-7, you shouldn't really be going into a head-on, that and the R-27 and the R-24. But the point is, these missiles are sort of designed for 10, 15 kilometer engagements, at least in War Thunder, they're most practical at the 10, 15 kilometer engagement range. And so why would you purposely put yourself outside of the range and then in the firing line of, of your own Python 3s? It's just nonsensical. So the way I would suggest that you play these is without going at that head-on aspect because you really will suffer. And it's one of the one of the flaws of this plane or one of the limitations rather. Uh, and that's not a, a deal breaker by any means. This plane, I've had a decent amount of fun in. Um, I would think more so than the uh, F-16 ADV. I don't really know why. I just really, really like the Pythons. I like it's a ability to stick onto those targets in rear aspect. I like its ability to sneak up and it's, you know, kind of what I was hoping for in the MiG-29, but of course uh, you'll probably get that with R-73s. We can make a video on that in a later date, but there we go again, that sort of off front aspect. I'm not quite sure what to call it because it's not quite side aspect, uh, but it's certainly close to frontal aspect uh, and that's the kind of sort of shot that you want to be making at the most aggressive. You want to be going again, like I said, for those targets that are not paying attention, and they're the targets that you can very easily kill with a Python 3. Especially, like I said, in the rear aspect, if they start flaring. If they start flaring in the front aspect, you're pretty much gone. Now, you might be wondering what is going to go on here. I've got a couple of enemies that are down below, and like I said, these are my primary targets. I'm playing this plane the way that I believe it should be played. We're going to go Python 1, Python 2, and then uh, we're probably going to go for that third one, coming down into the other F-14, but it looks like the first one's sort of gone awry. Uh, that's okay, it's not a problem. We're just gonna be launching. We're just, we're just gonna be launching friends, 
you get a python you get a python everybody gets a python and unfortunately for me i don't think that f16 has uh sort of taken his python home with him and instead he's going to leave it in the desert but that's okay we can always try and finish him off with something else but my team is now sort of getting finished off by the enemy team's missiles and it's starting to look really really hairy and this is another limitation that i want to speak about with the nets this is your carry potential and you don't really have much and it's simply because you don't have that standoff distance and of course once you do start dogfighting once you do start losing speed you really are going to pay the price quite heavily and that's just the way that the f-16 works that's just down to the nature of the airframe the F-16 and the uh, Mirage here, they've both got radar-guided missiles, and they're pretty much cleaning up my team. And there's not a whole lot that I can do. Uh, I've got 9Ls coming in towards me, which is fine. I can just flare those away. But now we're in a 2 versus one dogfight. I haven't got any missiles left because I wasted them all on the F-14s. Uh, and I am terrible at dogfighting in this plane. Now, part of that is definitely skill issue. But also, we're in a 2v2. There's a J-8B and the F-16. Now, F-16 v F-16, it, it's kind of an even fight. I just need to make sure that we can, you know, kind of keep the numbers even. And we're kind of doing that at the moment. The F-16 is uh, in front of me. I'm going to shut the afterburner off, try and just keep sneaking in behind him, and hopefully the J-8B can do his magic and uh, kill the Mirage, and that would make it really nice and easy. Now, I'm not really sure what I've done here. Um, I've kind of landed in the front of the F-16's guns, um, and I'm very confused as to what the hell I'm doing wrong because I, I still don't understand it. I still just am really, really struggling to make the most of the F-16's flight capability. Um, and the J-8B has decided to make the most of this opportunity and fuck off back to base, leaving me high and dry in a two versus one. Um, there's not a lot I can do here. If I try and escape from the F-16, there's probably going to be a missile with my name on it. And uh, if I try and dogfight, the Mirage is going to sweep me off my feet. And there's just sort of a, a, a really nothing that I can do. I can give it a go, and that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm in this situation, I might as well try, and try I will. I'm going to at least go down fighting, right? Uh, so I'm going to try and jet away from the Mirage, and then I realize that the F-16 is just going to come straight back down on me. He's picking up so much speed. I'm starting to run low on those missiles, uh, or on those flares, and uh, it's really, really starting to look very dire. The F-16 can come right down. He's got quite the speed advantage. I probably should have just committed to the F-16 here just to pull down one more with me. Uh, but I decide to commit to the Mirage, and it looks like the Mirage is just getting the better of me. It's that, um, it's that little triangle boy, that little Dorito, and it's just not really working out for good old F-16. But you know what? This is still something I can probably win, right? And uh, lo and behold, I come out of this completely unscathed as I put myself in front of the enemy's guns. Nothing wrong happening here whatsoever as we move on to the next match. This is probably the best thing that you can do in the nets, and that is be a sneaky boy. And we're basically going to be reiterating the same things, but you'll see it with a little bit more of a result here. It's uh, going, to be, going to be a good match, and you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just sort of sneaking around that low uh, part of the map. I'm, I'm sticking close to the ground, and of course, I am using the terrain to my advantage. I'm trying very, very hard to stay around the uh, the mountains, and then once I spot some enemies um, whose distance I've misjudged quite a lot, um, I just go for it. And the Mirage is going to be my first absolutely lovely customer, um, but it looks like the flares have managed to stifle my efforts. Uh, that's all right. We're going to go for this MiG-29, and the MiG-29 doesn't look like he's paying attention, so it looks like he is going to go and pay a big fat repair cost. Now, this is the head-on aspect that I was talking about. This is an F-4S. This is a clearly inferior fighter, but he can still potentially get the heads up on me simply because of that ability to carry AIM-7s. Because the Nets can't carry AIM-7s, you are pretty much boned in a head-on anything, literally anything, um, except like R-3Ss. But who's wielding R-3Ss at this tier? Maybe some poor soul flying a MiG-21 BIS, but that's pretty much it. So... Don't go head on, just just don't, just avoid it if you can, um, and you will have a lot better time in the nets. So what we're gonna do is go for this MiG-23, he's looking super juicy, he's firing off heaps of missiles, he's not really paying attention. It's starting to become rear aspect here, um, just as he's pulling away from me, uh, but I don't think I've got the range, yes I do. Lucky shot there, and that's kind of one of the things that you have to realize with this plane. The uh, Python 3s do have good range, but of course, 
Uh, I would consider them to be maybe the same as the 9Ls. Uh, probably don't launch any further than three and a half kilometers, and you'll well, you'll probably get it most of the time. It d just depends on who you're fighting. If you're fighting someone who's really fast, then you're probably going to be shit out of luck. If not, then you never know. You might just uh, you might just get some some good stuff going. Now, unfortunately for me, the uh, Python just went ooh shiny and decided to take to that lovely little uh, flare that was just sort of chilling over there. Uh, and that's okay. We're going to fire another one back and get a nice kill. Super easy. And then it's off to guns, guns, guns. And um, this is kind of where we start to lose our advantage because now we need to fly slow. Now we need to actually dogfight. We need to actually like put in some effort and shit. So uh, we're going to go for the little dogfight, drop a little bit of speed, uh, not go for the full commit head on there. And there are just enemies everywhere. So you do need to sort of start to thin out your targets. Pick one, maybe stick behind them, watch for the enemies that are behind you. And it looks like the uh, friendlies have kind of done that for us. This F-14 is meeting its demise, and we're pretty much all done. It's just all done in the missiles, and we're, we're just sort of flying around doing nothing. And you, you will find that that happens in your average top-tier match. Um, and to me, it's quite frustrating because, you know, you're, you're flying around, trying to go for this target, it dies. Go for the next target, it dies. But I feel like that's just part and parcel of top-tier, and it's just something that you have to come to terms with, albeit with the grudge. That's, that's how I do it, with a grudge. So, uh, F-16 versus Tornado is not much of a fight. Honestly, uh, it's extremely one-sided. The Tornado is a big fat bus, it's slow, it's about as fast as a Phantom, and it's less maneuverable, and it's garbage. So uh, I'm just gonna go for some, uh, let, let, let's call them warning shots. Let's call them warning shots. They're definitely warning shots, and they're not me struggling to aim the 20mm cannon because I have a massive skill issue, uh, and it's definitely not a problem with me. Um, that was me, absolutely, that missile. It was definitely me, and you can tell that I'm a really good pilot just by that. But I tell you what, the ability to aim the Vulcan cannon at speed is, is something that I still haven't quite gotten used to. I'll, I'll say that, and then I'll pull the most wizard shot from absolutely nowhere. And it's just the way that the game works. So sometimes the snail taketh, and sometimes the snail giveth your soul away to whoever pays more golden eagles for it. So that, that's kind of just the way it goes. And the F-16 is one of those planes that can sort of dogfight. It can do some stuff uh, like that. Um, that's, that's pretty impressive. I don't really know how I did that, but so it goes. And that's just how top tier works. You, you're going to be using your missiles like 99% of the time. And if you get a gun kill, cool. If you get a gun kill like that, cooler still. But that's the way it goes, I guess. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the Nets. Pretty cool fighter. Honestly, I wasn't expecting much, but I came in with some uh, pretty... Like, I came away feeling great. It's a, it's a good plane and, uh, you know, makes you feel good inside. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.